Hi guys, I have another Copic coloring and card tutorial for you today and today I'm coloring Mermaid Ocean and you know how much I love my mermaids and she's adorable. Today I have two big things to talk about when it comes to Make It Crafty. Uh, one is going to be about the coloring, about the new coloring challenge that's going up today and one is about the DT call. So we start with the DT call because that goes fastest. Um, so we just put up a new DT call for Make It Crafty. So if you want to be one of us colorists for Make It Crafty and join on the Make It Colorful uh, Color Challenge blog, then uh, you should really try to join in. Um, you have to be not be too afraid to step out of the box or more, you have to have courage to step out of the box and uh, join in and of course you have to love the make it crafty images now we are going to talk about the new challenge the new new challenge this month is blending outside the color family and the color family is basically reds is one color family blues is one green is one yellow is one and in this time we are talking about blending with colors that are not usually the one you're blending with. One I'm doing in this is I'm actually blending with the violet for my shadows together with the earth tones, the browns. So that is sort of a part of blending outside the color family. Now browns usually can blend with most colors so it's a little bit cheating, I know. So I actually have gone through and I have done a whole bunch of blending on this whole character because mermaids they can be in any color you want and I kind of thought it would be fun to add as much color as possible to her brights and beautiful colors. So I'm going to start with the tail. This is a very kind of detail intensive image uh, but you'll see where I'm coming at. I'm using a dark blue green and I'm kind of dotting the deeper center of all of those little little scales to kind of give the scales a dimension. The way I'm shadowing this image is that I'm actually making bigger dots uh, towards where the shadowing area is of the darker colors and leaving more of the lighter colors in the front where her kind of where the light hits. Uh, I'm starting out with blue greens because I love using blue greens and teals for her tail. So I'm having three different blue greens, leaving a lot of white uh, on the scales. Then I'm going in with a, a yellow green. Now I'm jumping color uh, families and basically actually blending in the yellow green into the blue greens, which actually trans transfers the blue greens to more of a green, yellow green green. Then I'm using some darker yellows um, at the tip of the scales and this time to kind of give a golden feeling. And the and last thing I'm doing is actually going in with the yellow green and kind of blending the blue green and the um, yellow together. That is actually called gradients, but um, in this case I'm actually building up other colors from new colors. Then we come to the tail and again I'm doing a little bit more gradient, but I'm using the yellow to kind of peach up that red color which I really, really like. And then I'm going in with the uh, yellow red in between, just so that I get a much smoother blend. I'm gonna do the same with the hair, almost, because the last thing I'm doing with the hair is actually going over with the um, lightest yellow, which is YO2, and that will peach up the whole color scheme a lot. I have done a whole bunch of different mermaids, uh, there's a whole bunch on my blog and I really like the kind of peachy, uh, light, teal colors, but I really wanted this to have much more strength in its color, much deeper shadows than the other images that I've been coloring. But I don't have a very deep... Uh, 
peach color. Uh, I have used very light yellow reds to get to that deep that peach before but now I want it to be much much darker and if you use the yellow reds for that you get a very orange image so what I'm doing is I'm adding the red which is the R14 in the bottom then I'm kind of blending that out with the yellow red to peach it up a little bit then I'm going over again with a yellow, which is a little bit more of a muted yellow, which is a very good step between the bright yellow and the yellow red. And then as finishing touch, I'm going with the IO2, y YO2, which is a very bright yellow to kind of brighten up the peach and make the peach a little bit more alive. And that, my people, is blending across the color families. So um, I really, really enjoyed how this, both the hair and the tail and everything looked because I got it so bright and so colorful. I also go and do a similar thing with the eyes and the kind of bodice shell thingy. I'm using the same blue greens on the bodice as I did and I'm using one green and then I'm going over all of it with a yellow green to kind of give it a more of a deeper green. Again, a color that I really haven't had, really don't get that easy from just using a simple yellow green in the colors. So um, that is actually really fun playing around with colors. Uh, right now I'm again, I'm cutting her out. I started just cutting out the image, realized that I needed to cut down the paper before I started the small crevices because it's easier when you don't have a lot of paper hanging around when you're trying to go around all of those curly curls. And um, after I've cut it, cut the image out, I'm going in with my little Martha Stewart knife. I really like how it sits in my hand. I don't get so tired in my fingertips when I use this. Um, so I really like that uh, knife and it's uh, much easier to use. Uh, I don't cut myself as much. I have cut myself with it though. But then I didn't use it for cutting. I use it for bending. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, I cut out all of the places where I feel that the lines um, can be thick enough. So I'm actually leaving white in several places because I feel that those places um, I wouldn't be able to cut it so I had an even line. So I just leave it white. Um, but yeah. And now we're gonna start with the background which actually is a another one using a Tim Holtz Distress Ink. I'm starting out with some evergreen bow and then I'm gonna go around the borders with some pine needles. This is actually also going to be one using different colors from different color groups to kind of uh, blend together. So at the top I'm using some blues, uh, it's uh, some tumbled glass, some salty ocean on top of that and then I'm uh, finishing it off with some chipped sapphire. And then I'm going in with a yellow on top of both the green and the blue to kind of make this a whole other color because I wanted it to be a very yellowy kind of greenish sea color which I really really liked. I really enjoyed doing this just coloring it uh, in. So that is another blending across the color families. Then I'm going in with the uh, tumbled glass because I want to have a whole bunch of details but I don't want them to stand out too much. So I'm blending with the tumbled glass. I'm going to do a couple of rings in the uh, corner here and then I'm actually going to use both the tumbled glass and some of the salty oceans in, in the deepest border. And to finishing it off, I'm adding some more dots and stuff with the yellow one. No, I'm actually not going this fast. It's uh, sped up like four times to have uh, the possibility to show you the whole the creation because it took some time to play around with my stencils. Then I'm using some green uh, simple cardstock. This is Do Crafts um, 12 by 12 sheets. 
in a whole bunch of colors. I know Simon Says Stamp has the uh, eight by eight package of the same papers. Then I'm using my Craft Companion tape runner, um, adding a lot of glue to this um, page because when you work with the distressings, it's get a little bit kind of moist, so it can bend a little bit. So I'm adding a lot of um, tape to that. And then I'm added some foam tape to the back side of the image and putting her on the top because I'm having a little uh, die cut sentiment at the bottom. So I got this die in the Simon Says Stamp card kit this month and I just had to use it even before I used the rest of the kit, of course. Um, and I just cut it out in the same cardstock that I'm using for my mat. And then I'm pricking every little hole into die and carefully using my tweezers to kind of take it out of the die. Just a little bit careful so that you don't tear it. I'm using some SIG two-way glue pen uh, at the kind of back side of the hole and kind of dotting the hole apart with the glue to give a good coverage. I really like this pen onto this very fine detail um, die cuts. And then I add it to the bottom um, of the paper and having such a dark green helps it stand out from the background. As a finishing touch I'm using my Wink of Stella glitter pen uh, both on the sunshine and on top of her bodice. I want to be kind of a warning and to be careful about adding too much glitter on top of your copy coloring because if you have added a lot of details the details will somewhat disappear because the glitter kind of uh, breaks the um, the light in a different way so if you add it if I would have added all over her tail all the details that I've been working on to get there would slightly disappear so that is why I'm just doing it on her bodice and to finish everything off I am going to add some tape to the back side of the panel and I'm adding the panel on top of a standard A2 card base that I've made from some Nina cardstock. So that is the card for today. I hope you liked it. If you do, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just comment down below and I'll answer all the questions. All the materials and all the links I've talked about is down in the description where you also can find the link to my blog where more information is about this card. And here on the end slate, you can see two other videos that you can click on. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.